Hey everybody, this is uh, PTN Talk Radio Live again, and we're going to do post-trib proof seven as we've been learning about about uh, Christ coming after the tribulation. That when He comes, it's going to be the wrath of God, or also known as the wrath of the Lamb, and that's because He's bringing vengeance upon the earth, as we talked about last time. So we're going to look and see that the Word of God tells us that the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord, the gathering of the saints, first resurrection, the day of wrath, the day of darkness, the day of the trumpet. Deep in the night are all the same day. And we're going to look through some scriptures here, Old and New Testament, to show this truth here. Zephaniah 1, 4 through 16, it says, The great day of the Lord is near. It is near. And has greatly uh, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of waste, uh, wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloomness gloominess, a day of the clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet, and and uh, alarm against the fence cities and against the high towers. Now remember, you know, when it comes the trumpet, remember Trump's going to sound, Paul talked about, okay, a trumpet sound. It's all saying the same thing in the Old Testament as it's saying in the New Testament. Let us know. That's why it's called a great and terrible day of the Lord, because that's when God's wrath comes. So look at this right here in Job 2, 10, 10 through 11. It says, The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong to execute his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? See, it's warning us. It's warning us about the wrath to come. That's he's going to bring upon this earth here. And that's what we've got to we've got to understand here what's going on and what's taking place here. That's why it's so important to study these out. Okay, let's look at some more here. Here also in Joel uh, 2, verse 31 says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. When the coming of the Lord, the coming of Jesus, when it comes, it's called a great and terrible day. Why? Because God's wrath's coming, the wrath of the Lamb. Matthew twenty four twenty one. For then shall be great tribulation, such as it was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. Jesus said that. Also, we know the twenty four. Uh, Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31, he says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be dark. And that's the same thing we just heard Joe say. Same thing. Okay, same thing from the Old Testament. Zephaniah, Joel, they said the exact same thing. The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not uh, give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. We just heard that too. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We heard that too in the Old Testament. And then shall appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man, Jesus, the day of the Lord, the day of him coming, a great sound of a trumpet. There's the trumpet. And they shall be gathered together, his elect, from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, now we see in verses, same chapter, 24 in Matthew 42 through 43 says, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come, but know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would, would have watched and would not have uh, suffered his house to be broken up. First Corinthians 6 verses 6 to 8 says, But brother, Go to law with brother and before the unbelievers. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take the wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? Nay, you uh, you do wrong and default at your brother. I think that was a mistake on that one. Sorry about that. But listen to this. Anyway, uh, First Thessalonians 5, 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as what? A thief in the night. Same thing that was just said there. A thief in the night. He's going to come. All right? So we don't know what hour. We can't tell you such such, you know, this date and this hour the Lord's coming. No. But it does tell us after the tribulation, he does tell us what's a sign of his coming when disciples ask him in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. You know, what would be the sign of thy coming and end of the world? He tells them. So when Christ comes, it's the end of the world. God's judgment's coming, okay? Heavens are going to be no more. Stars are going to fall from heaven. The sun, the moon, which all they're shining. All these things are going to happen at the great, and, the great and terrible day of the Lord, it's called. Now listen to this one. It says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 and 2, now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not so she shake it in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. 
day of Christ, the same as the day of the Lord when he comes. But the day of the Lord, Second Peter, here's Peter talking about it, 310. But the day of the Lord will come as what? A thief. So, so Peter shows that the day of the Lord is when he comes a thief in the night. That's when the coming of the Lord. That's when that trumpet sounds. That's when the, the you know the stars fall from heaven. All these things happen. And it talks about in scripture. So here's Peter backing it up. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away. We talked about that with a great noise. And the elements shall melt away with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So if it's burned up and the heavens are no more, where are you going to be raptured to? These are questions you better be asking. Because if you're thinking Christ's coming to rapture you and he's coming to destroy this earth, we have a big problem here. Revelations 20 verses 5 through 6. But the rest of the dead live not again. Until the thousand years were finished, this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So we see what where are we at? We get during the tribulation, the wrath of Satan, the great tribulation, the wrath of Satan, we are killed. This is when Satan gets cast here to the earth, he brings his angels with him, they begin to persecute us, they kill us. And and Joel even talks about how uh, Job even talks about how we are hid in the grave until thy wrath be passed, till God's wrath be passed. So we do not we do not partake in God's wrath. God's wrath are the seven vials, which are the seven last plagues, and they get poured out the day of the Lord when Christ comes. We're hid in the grave when He comes. The wicked are destroyed, and then we are raised from the dead. It says He'll remember us. So that's what we need to study. We need to really take time to take a look at scriptures and see what scripture says. Visit us at www.posttribnetwork.org. God bless you and thank you for tuning in.